This is the OnePlus 7 Pro, and even though this phone is two years old now, it's still one of my favorite phones that I've ever used. Not only that, but with how these flagships have fallen in price on the used markets, it's also one of the best value Android phones that you can buy right now. The question is, should you? It's time for Tech Rewind. The OnePlus 7 Pro was a fantastic device when it first came out. It actually won Smartphone of the Year at Marquez's annual award ceremony in December of 2019. But that was a year and a half ago, and not only has the phone aged since then, but our perception of what makes a great smartphone has changed as well. So let's start with the good stuff, and then we'll move on to the not so good stuff a little later on. First of all, this phone has one of the best looking displays of any phone on the market, new or old. It's almost 100% screen on the front. There's little bezel to speak of, and there's no cutout or notch for the front facing camera. That's because the front camera is hidden inside the top of the frame and it pops up when you need it. This method does add an extra point of failure to the camera system, but I really haven't heard many reports of the front camera mechanism failing yet, and I think it makes the whole front side of the phone look a a whole lot cleaner. The display itself is a 6.67 inch AMOLED display that runs at a higher refresh rate of 90 hertz and a high resolution of 1440p. It's plenty sharp, it gets plenty bright, and even though the display doesn't have the fastest refresh rate on the market anymore, it's plenty quick for most people. I think it goes without saying that consuming any kind of media on this phone is pretty much ideal. There's no notch or hole punch getting in the way, the size is great, the color and contrast from this AMOLED panel is great, and the 7 Pro has a pair of stereo speakers that sound pretty decent as well. The 7 Pro also has an under the display fingerprint reader that seems to have gotten quite a bit better than it was at launch, if I'm remembering correctly. It's still not the fastest or the most accurate reader I've ever used, but it feels quite a bit quicker than it used to and doesn't mess up nearly as much. The only thing that I'm not totally over the moon about when it comes to the front side of this phone is how aggressive the curvature around the sides of the display are. If you choose not to put a case on it, that aggressive curving of the display leads to quite a few accidental touches. The OnePlus 7 Pro still feels great in the hand though. It's a little on the heavier side at 206 grams, but the back glass doesn't feel cheap at all and I still really like the nebula blue color that OnePlus put on this phone. One of the biggest reasons a lot of you might consider buying an older flagship as opposed to a newer budget phone is for the performance benefits, and the OnePlus 7 Pro is still excellent in that regard. The 7 Pro is running a Snapdragon 855 and between 6 and 12 gigs of RAM. My model has 8 and it's been fast and fluid for 99% of the time that I've been using it, whether it be for gaming, scrolling social media, or anything else. One thing that a lot of the phones that I've tested for Tech Rewind have in common is poor battery life. And if you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, batteries degrade over time. But this OnePlus 7 Pro I have here actually has very decent battery life. It's got a 4,000 mAh battery and I can easily get all day battery life on the OnePlus 7 Pro, even when the display is cranked up to 90 Hertz and 1440p. That's pretty rare for an older phone like this and you can always turn down those settings just a bit if you want it to last even longer. It's also got fast wired charging as long as you use the 30 watt warp charger that came in the box. It does not, however, have any form of wireless charging, which is a bit of a letdown here in 2021 when I have a lot of wireless chargers around my house. This phone was one of the last phones that OnePlus made where they tried to cut costs aggressively while still providing excellent performance, and wireless charging was just one of those things that they decided to cut out. The other thing they cut was the water resistance certification. Now, to be clear, the OnePlus 7 Pro is actually somewhat water resistant, even though it isn't certified. I remember watching Dave2D's review of it when the phone first came out, and he did the entire review with it submerged in a jug of water, and it was totally fine. Now, I wouldn't be swimming with it or anything, but you probably don't have to worry about getting it wet. Okay, we're gonna get into camera testing, pricing, and some of the things that you definitely wanna keep in mind before you buy this phone, but first, I need to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. Protecting yourself online is essential, and using NordVPN is one of the simplest ways to do it. It works by creating an encrypted and secure tunnel between your computer and the host that you're accessing, and you can get it by going to nordvpn.com slash spurl, or by clicking in the link down in the description below. NordVPN has a bunch of different uses, and you can put it on pretty much every device you own. You can use it on your Mac or your PC at home, or you can put it on your Android phone, like the OnePlus 7 Pro, or your iOS device to keep you protected while you're out and about on public Wi-Fi. The biggest reason why I 
use Nord is to protect me from getting my personal or my banking information stolen, but it's got other uses too. For example, you can use it to bypass region locked content that you wouldn't normally be able to access without living in a particular country. As a Canadian, I have no access to Hulu, but if I just switch to a US server, Hulu thinks I live in the US and I can just bypass those restrictions in just a few seconds. Some people could worry about losing speed when they connect to a VPN, but Honestly, I haven't noticed a single difference between when my VPN was on and when it was off. Look, NordVPN is one of the best VPNs out there and you don't have to take my word for it. Just go ahead and Google NordVPN reviews. It's got top ratings literally everywhere and you should definitely get it. Use the link in the video description below or use the promo code SPURL to get a two year plan plus one month with a huge discount. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to the OnePlus 7 Pro. All right, it's camera time. On the back of the 7 Pro, there are three cameras, a 48 megapixel wide angle camera with a laser autofocus system, an eight megapixel telephoto, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide. The cameras for the most part are okay. There's nothing particularly special about them. They take decent enough photos during the day with a good amount of color and sharpness, and they don't tend to oversaturate anything, which is good if you like taking true to life photos. This really isn't the phone for you if you love photography though, as the cameras on the rear are average at best and they fall apart completely in low light. The Pixel 4 would be more your speed if photography on a budget is what you're after. The best camera of all of them is actually this 16 megapixel front facing camera that pops out. Sharpness is great across the board and it seems to do very well in high dynamic range scenarios. For me though, the cameras being a little mediocre is not that big of a deal. They weren't amazing when the phone came out and I really didn't expect them to get much better with software updates. The biggest problem with the OnePlus 7 Pro for me is actually the software updates themselves. There's just not enough of them. As of right now, I still can't get Android 11 on this particular OnePlus 7 Pro. Some non-carrier 7 Pros can be updated to a beta version of Android 11, which is still not a full release, but it's better than nothing. But this Sprint 5G model still can't update past Android 10 at all. Android 10 isn't bad or anything, and there's still a load of customization options like the ability to change icon packs and fonts in the default Oxygen OS launcher, but not having timely software updates on a phone that's barely two years old is definitely a letdown for me. That being said, I still think the OnePlus 7 Pro is completely worth it because you can get one of these phones on the used market right now for a lot less than most new budget phones. On the top end, you could pay around 250 to 300 US dollars, but they can go as low as 200 or even 150 on eBay, which is crazy low for what this phone offers. So at the end of every Tech Rewind episode, I give each phone a rating from A plus at the top and F all the way at the bottom. And to be completely honest with you guys, <laughs> This was a really tough rating to give because I really wanted it to be the first Tech Rewind phone with an A+. I love it that much, but I just can't give it that. It's an outstanding device with the all screen, high refresh rate display, great battery life and excellent performance. But with the mediocre cameras, no wireless charging and lack of software updates, I just can't give this phone a rating any higher than an A minus. The OnePlus 7 Pro is still a great phone to buy, but it's not perfect. As long as you're okay with that fact, I can almost guarantee that you'll love this phone. If I'm being totally honest here, I could easily use the 7 Pro as my main phone for the next couple of years without many complaints at all. And I'm sure you could too. Thanks for watching and as always, have a great day.